Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hey, everybody. So we're going to get to our episode in just a second, but I wanted to make sure that you heard about my latest offering because people have been asking, how can I work with Jolie? And I would love to work with you, but you all have such individual relationships. So I would love to see you pop into my next free live training. It's the best way. Yeah. My it's eyes, right, directly, your relationship. These are small intimate groups. We're just going to meet in Zoom and we're going to talk about what it is that you want and how you can get it. Go to my website, joliehamilton.com. Click on the work with Jolie tab. You'll see some live trainings and master classes coming up. Grab a spot at the next one and we'll see you in there. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. We're going to talk about sex parties. Sex parties. Yeah. That's a fun kind of party. It can, can be. be. Mm -hmm. I have been to ones that aren't, though, so they don't have to be. So, <laughs> what do we, we call maybe... that a party? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Word sex in it. So, the subtitle we're going to talk of about how to episode, make it well done. Yeah. The mm. subtitle of this episode could definitely be What Makes for Really Well Done Casual Play? Okay. So, well, first off, let's talk about the word play. I don't usually mm. think of these as sex parties, actually. I yeah. think of them as play parties. Mm -hmm. And I use the word play instead of sex quite a lot. In fact, um, well, for the purposes of this podcast, I often will use the word sex in a place where in my day-to-day -day life, I would use the word play. And I do that so that I'm being as as super crisp as I can for an audience that I can't interact with. So I don't know whether they're hearing me the way I mean mm -hmm. for them to. Um, you and I settled on using the word play very early mm -hmm. on before we really even knew what we were doing. And that was out of necessity because <laughs> for a long time, yes. um, you had I a whole, I mean, I, I didn't you had a ever... couple things you would let we could do. My vocabulary was limited. Your vocabulary was limited. And you were feeling a lot of shame and your more, boundaries yeah. were very clear. Mm -hmm. And there was a very narrow range of activities that you were willing to participate in. And my definition of sex was narrow also. They didn't really overlap. So right. I used another word. Right. Also you used fooling around. Fooling around. Fooling around. Like fuck around and find out? No. No, not like that. No, more like I was born in the, I don't know, the, the late, late 19th century <laughs> and was um, a hobo Were you hobo going to go kitchen? Yeah. Were you going to meet on the kissing bridge? Um, possibly, yes. And it was bundling. Yeah. How old are you? Are you a Duna Dane? It's possible he's 160 years old. I have no idea, people. I still like sex parties and I like them to go well. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so the reason we use and I like to play the word play for these parties is there can be this pressure. Let's deal with the pressure right okay, off yeah. the bat, right? When we're talking about a sex party, all of a sudden our imagination can fill up with like what we should do and what we want to have happen and how this has to go and what we might. And then all of a sudden all the gremlins can come out Yo. and go yeah. absolutely berserk in our brain and that can really suck all the joy and fun and pleasure out of the experience. And that's the opposite of the point. It's the opposite of the point. The and point because of the collaborative nature of, of it, it kind of sucks the joy out of it for other people too. It can. It's, it it can. can. So so by releasing, I mean, so on the one hand, the word sex is important because we want to be clear. We don't want to invite people to a party or go to a party where we don't know that sex is one of the intentions. That's even more awkward. That's, that, that could get pretty awkward. That's, I believe they call that undergrad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. But, so, but on the other hand, opening up some space in the words that we use to describe the party and talk about playing, 
talking about, um, yeah, I mean, what does uh, Midori says that kink is um, childlike play with adult privileges? It's like for right. adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, she has a wonderful quote about it. I should look it up. Um, about yeah, we we get to keep playing, and we're grown-ups and we are consenting and we're having an experience together. Okay. So how do we pull this off? Um, there are two sides to think about. I think hosting there's hosting and, attending. and there's attending. Mm -hmm. And I think that the first rule that has helped me, whether no matter what side I was on is that over communication is thumbs up that yeah. that helps a lot yeah. so we have a lot of ways to communicate these days group chats and and group texts and phone calls and zoom meetings and all sorts of ways carrier pigeons whatever <laughs> but we we still have a tendency uh, as a group um to under communicate when we get near taboo subjects right and so if a sex party is feeling like it's a very edgy thing um, or if we have, if we're trying to play it cool, we're oh, trying to be cool, like, right. Yeah. Like trying to play it cool. Like it's no big deal. I have made that mistake. And yeah, that's, we may under communicate about things that would actually set us up to have a really that's enjoyable it, it, experience. It actually is more boring to play it cool and under communicate. Yeah. Because, don't play it cool. Yeah. We you'll don't need to do you'll miss opportunities and there's, it doesn't help. Yeah. So over communicate. And then the next thing I think is, well, I hope it's obvious, but consent mm -hmm. is key. And I think of the hosting part as being a really optimal spot to be for having consent forward planning. Mm -hmm. Like not just consent as necessary, but consent forward, like intentionally introducing the ideas of consent and how consent is going to work, how it's how we're going to center it and really really bring, yeah. you know, enthusiastic, ongoing consent into the room. Bring it right out into the room. Yeah. yeah. And before, during, and after, like during all the parts. So one of the ways that we can do that is by taking responsibility for, for opening the conversation about consent right from the invitation, right, right yeah. during the invita invitation stage, like, hey, this is going to be a consent forward environment. So we're going to be having discussions about consent. We're going to be doing some things to make sure that consent is not only present, but there's, there's follow through, like yeah. we, like it's accessible because consent can only happen uh, if, if people aren't feeling coerced and right. invisible, right? So then there's the logistics, possibly the more boring side, but in, but there's a lot of joy to be had in, in handling logistics. Um, so one of the things that you get as, as a host in handling logistics is a lot of anticipation. You're, yeah. you're in it, you have, you have stuff to do and every one of those things, you know where it's leading. It's leading to a, a sex party, to a play party. That's exciting. It is. So it can be boring stuff to do, but knowing what it's for can be pretty enjoyable. So some of the things to think about are, okay, where where exactly is this event being held? And what are the, the ground rules for the, the place where it's being held? Are there um, rooms that are available? Are there rooms that are unavailable? Are there spaces that we want certain activities to happen? Are there, are there activities that we don't want to be happening on property at all? Um, what are the rules going to be around mind altering substances? What are the rules going to be? What are we agreeing to when we show up um, about, about leaving if there's intoxication going on? Mm -hmm. Or what happens if someone violates consent what what are we going to do what what's our what's our go-to move going to be so putting a little forethought into these things can help us just sort of set the container in a way to um, facilitate a feeling of safety and and comfort which facilitates pleasure some of these logistics are really about i mean towels right <laughs> i mean there i've Blue. never been towels um, lube in dispensers that, that don't clean that, that are fresh, able to be, you know, um, yeah. In other words, pump bottles and 
um, hand sanitizer and and make sure you wash hand, okay like don't get hand sanitizer in, in the, delicate areas that's yes. a bad idea i was talking about for the bottle not for any other places yep. and certainly not yeah okay there are concerns so Ta but there's there have never to been about. too many towels at a party correct never had too many towels you want to be a hoopy fruit who really knows mm -hmm. where his that's towel is right douglas adams is always appropriate to quote um when we're talking about establishing ground rules we might also want to keep in mind that we want help, right? One person can handle all of this, but it's it's really helpful if more than one person really knows what's going on. If you have co-planners and people who know the space well, mm -hmm. that can be really helpful for just arranging some of the basic logistics, like where are people going to park if they're if they're driving cars in, and where are people going to put their personal items and we, who, what happens? Are we closing the doors at a specific time yeah. so that everybody can feel like, okay, we're all here now and we're sharing space and consent is being discussed. These are all planning issues that it's easier to hold the container and the line and the boundaries around them. If there's could, more than one person on yeah, board mm -hmm. sharing that responsibility. And it's way easier to plan it in advance than to try to generate it in the moment. Yeah, and that doesn't. Yeah, it, it hasn't. It adds to the pressure and it can start to feel like, well, I mean, if you're into service, if you're into the role of feeling like you're in service, that could mm -hmm. be very pleasurable, but um, it can be a lot. Yeah. So it's okay to share that around. Yeah. Um, and then there's stuff about like getting getting the mood set. What kind of mood are you looking to create? Mm. Because that could make a big difference about what sorts of spaces you want to have available. You know, do you want to be able to put mattresses on a floor? Do you want do you want to have um, multiple open bedrooms or um, a party at um, a hotel suite where there are a few spaces? What do you want to do to create both public, you know, in a consensual way, like shared spaces, not public spaces, but right, shared yeah. spaces and potentially some break off spaces because those can be fun too. Um, some parties don't have break off spaces, but putting a little thought into what sort of mood you want to set and, and what people are hoping to get out of this. I think it's pretty funny that we were at a party where everybody ended up in the breakout space and then the bed broke. <laughs> Yes, that happened. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That happened. Um, anyway. Well, sometimes the breakout space just isn't big enough. Yeah. It was just a pop. It was a good spot. It was. It was a good spot it to be. Spot. But yeah, there are things to plan for and prepare for. And some of them have to do with like, like setting the mood in multiple sensory ways. So if you think about the senses, um, how can we make the, the mood you know, visually, oh, well, we were also at a at a party and this happens in our own house. Bit of a fishbowl in some rooms. Oh, yeah. Right. If the lights are on in yep. some rooms and you happen to have a window that faces the, the road or something. Yeah, that can that be. That can get a little, a little. Um, it is at the infamous. very least non-consensual <laughs> for the people going by. Right. So, so these you are things think to about think that. about. Um, do we need to cover a window or do we need to ask for play not to happen in a certain room because of that? Um, also lighting, what's going to happen. So a purely dark atmosphere isn't usually practical when there are multiple people going around doing things because um, it's, it's literally a tripping hazard. Yep. <laughs> so while it might play out fun in some scenarios, usually there's a need for sort of that in intermediate lighting. Yeah. Got to think that through ahead of time. Um, sound. What mm -hmm. sort of sounds do you want to have? Um, I, and it it could be a really wide variety of yeah. desires in that along those lines. Like different people find different types of of music and sounds um, either really like intoxicating or disorienting or upsetting. So you might want to have a few different playlists available yeah. to change the mood. And sound can really shift the mood. So. I, if something's, if stuff isn't really working, sound is one way to subtly shift the mood. I mean, mm -hmm. we do this just, just the two of us. Yeah. If we just can't find a groove together, music can often bridge that gap between the physical and the, the sort of spiritual connection that we're looking for. 
And that sounds all very woo, but it's no, true. But it works it, for us. Yeah. So as a host, so you have a collection of people that you have invited. And what you just described is trying to set up an environment that will be conducive for the people who are coming. Yes. So. Hopefully. Sorry. That okay. was just all sitting right. right there. So Sorry. there it is. Um, how much would you like? Um, solicit your survey attendees, them. survey them for what kind of uh, well, environment they would like. So this is a this is a thing that I've I've seen play out in a bunch of different ways. On the one hand, it can be nice to just be invited to a party and know that you know you're you're going to have free choice about how you participate, and you just go and find out, and and the space is sort of co-created, the mood is co-created in the moment. And then on the other hand, pre-vetting so that there's some overlap in, in erotic desires mm -hmm. can can really um, create a lot of, of feelings of not just safety, but anticipation. When I have attended events that I don't know what's what the expectations are, that can be really overwhelming yeah. because I don't know, I don't even know what to let myself get excited about. That, that was... And managing... Um managing disappointment is a big deal for me. So uh, I wish it weren't, but you know, it, it's just part of my story. So yeah, I like to have some, some input either solicited from me, or I like to solicit some input mm -hmm. and it can be hard to know what that means because then it can start to feel like a laundry list of like, Oh, people want these things to yeah, happen. Right. And then you're trying to sort of in the moment, trying to make sure you get to them. Like it's a checklist and that can really, so flexibility. Sure. Also possible some people who are really flexible because that can be. <laughs> um, that's not really me. So I have not to invite me. somebody else. Yeah. I, I think that it's worth noting that when we're wa walking through the senses, um, te the temperature of the rooms can be yeah. a big deal to different people. Mm -hmm. Um, so you might want to take into account and how, if possible, have some different options and have some spare blankets or robes hanging around for the thing is a play party. Isn't just about banging away. No. There's lots nope. of um, opportunities usually for voyeurism and exhibitionism for, for, and for just like casual bonding and chatting and cuddling and getting yeah. to know each other in a naked or way. Yeah. Generally naked or yeah. way. So having some different options for that can just be a nice touch. Um, and when we're, when we're um, attending too, so bringing with me some items that will help me feel mm -hmm. comfortable. So I like, sure. I love having like a light robe that I can leave. Um, I can just Handy like, hey, just yeah. So I can one. feel sort of um, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not leaving the scene, but I just want to be, I'm not, I don't necessarily want to walk around stark naked the whole time because mm -hmm. maybe I don't, or maybe I'm chilly. And so that's something that I learned really quickly. Like, Oh, pack that, grab that. And that brings me a lot of comfort. I all of a sudden feel like I'm still, um, erotically engaged, but I can step back a little bit. I can take a break. And you know what, uh, what you can bring and still feel that erotic energy that doesn't block like, yeah. you know, a, um, I mean, some people, this would work great for erotic energy, but like an old flannel shirt, might not be what you wanted to throw on because it might interrupt your erotic okay, energy. So you bring now I want you to bring an old flannel shirt. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. So maybe that was a bad example. It might have been. Um, a, uh, a seersucker vest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't bring my best Silk du Peony gown. Okay. Right. I wouldn't. That's, okay, that for me wouldn't be the right vibe. Yeah. Um, Lube would stain that in a heartbeat. It really would. And it, you can't get it out. I know from experience mm. my wedding dress will never be the same um setting the mood is important but also allowing things to be to become to be to just to be what they're going uh, to flexibility be. flexibility again, yep. and setting down the idea that there's one needed outcome so this is oh, yeah. in in sex ed we often talk about hey so what if we stopped worrying about the orgasm so much and started following pleasure that's a great rule for a sex party because, well, I often don't necessarily, I don't really, I don't know. I mean, I do, I have had orgasms at them, but that's not the focus for me Yeah. Um, because often I'm not as relaxed as I want to be. 
I'm not relaxed because I'm also doing stuff and I am interested yeah. and I'm engaged and I'm talking to people. And yeah. So relieving yourself from the idea that there has to be a specific goal, a yeah. specific outcome. And, um, I have had play parties where I didn't even really get an erection. Yeah. Which just, early on. Oh, that drove you bonkers. Yeah. It drove me well, bonkers because I was, um, because I had an idea of how it was supposed to go and I wasn't flexible. And that idea was probably born largely from pornography. Why do I always say pornography? Pornography. I say it's because of good omens. I can't stop saying nope, you pornography. Can't. And you're not going so to. So ridiculous. Either. Okay. When, yes, so from the porn... pornographic. Um, <laughs> seriously, uh, don't oh, take shoot, me seriously. I can't remember the old word for movies. Um, uh, Zoeotrope. Um, yeah, so Somebody I think the, I think the, okay. I think the porn is uh, was a was a big con point of confusion in this because it, porn too. is it um, creates this it has a lot of, a lot of we've we've talked about this in another episode. It has plenty of uses, but it's not a model for how the sex is likely to go right under well, normal circumstances because I mean, it's why because it's it's not i mean like, that's people not how also it's don't fly through the air movies aren't real <laughs> okay okay wait so, say that again yeah yeah what? i mean a cape does not allow you to fly and uh Damn. yeah um dr strange while um, jason momoa is absolutely fantastic he's not aquaman and if you poke him with a spear he'll probably get cut Oh, these well, things upsetting. aren't real. I, I'm not sure that's true. That last okay, one well, that not might be not true. be true, but <laughs> in general, yeah. So, okay, so, so, but, but I wasn't thinking about it that way. So I was, I was going to these porn things with this image meant to be acted out, like literally. Mm -hmm. If anything, it would be inspirational. Yeah, and you're not getting an erection did not in any way need to interfere with the amount of pleasure that was happening in the scene. Yeah, focusing on pleasure has allowed me to have a very different experience right in, so in these group settings when you got over or, that or, or at home alone right uh even literally alone there's lots there's of good lots stuff of pleasure to, to have. do with, a, with soft body parts uh -huh. yeah lots like we could make a list a long list so i think i brought that up just uh to say that as an attendee um don't get caught up in there being one particular outcome which you already said yeah but if that means like of uh, like your own performance or whatever in your college yeah. or yeah yeah just Let relax get in there and, and find where the pleasure is for you that moment yeah and 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 allow yourself to be in touch with what you're feeling in the moment and it's okay to take a break in these in this kind of scene you may find yourself overwhelmed in a moment that's that's why we create like little sanctuary spaces yeah. and breakout spaces where, okay, it's okay to take some time either for yourself or with a particular partner you might have gone with or with somebody you've just like connected with. Just take a break and, and you know, move yourself out of the headspace of sex and into, <laughs> <laughs> into, right, I'm a person. I can have multiple feelings at once. Some of them might be a little overwhelming. Put some of my self-regulation tools yeah into action now this is a good time to do some um some thoughtful breathing some mindful breathing some returning to yourself i like to recall all the pieces of myself mm, because that's a really good in, idea in that sort of environment i can start to sort of leave parts of myself all over the all over the room like okay i there's so much going on and i want to be a part of it all and i can sort of emotionally cast myself out mm. there and and parts of myself that feel unsure or uncertain may start to feel awake and alive yeah my complexes may be up i may be in the grips of a complex mm -hmm. and that's gonna put me in a spot to uh to need to put my my self-regulation skills back into order you know put bring them online and to know that i'm at choice i'm at choice yes i get to leave i get to I, like there are i am at choice um, and that's a great conversation to have with any, if you're going to a party with a partner, it's great to know. So what's the exit strategy mm -hmm. if this is not working for one or both of us? Usually if it's not working for both of us, pretty straightforward. You look at each other, 
you either say your 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 exit strategy word, <laughs> maybe you use your safe word for yeah. it. Um, but if it's working for one of you and not the other, what's your plan? What's your game plan? What are you going to do? Um, my move has been to, to do a check-in and figure out how we can make it reasonable for each other. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it were not crossing a line, if it's just like, well, this isn't as much fun as I had hoped for, but oh, I'm okay, actually. Here's another place where asymmetry just happens sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've been at parties where one or the other of us is having more attention or is just more present and eh, and that can be okay. That's how it can go. And yep. that doesn't necessarily detract from what I think of as the actual key. Oh, for me, the biggest benefit for this sort of event is the memory that you create. Yes. I was, it's for later yep. more than anything. For me, that that's that's the joy I get out of it is, well, later I'm going to have this 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 memory of, of people I interacted with and beauty that I witnessed and joy and pleasure. And, and honestly, that's it. Watching. I love I love watching people experiencing pleasure and joy and um, having this sort of embodied experience of compersion for my partner in these spaces. Yeah, that's. That's great. And so it doesn't, I don't need to have it be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Same as, same as doesn't, it doesn't uh, add up here. Um, That said, bringing lube and condoms and barriers that work for your body, very important. As a guest, don't expect that everything will be provided. Make sure you bring yourself, bring your stuff, bring the stuff you want. Um, If you're a squirter, Bring some pads so that you're not squirting all over everybody else's stuff. Um, if you're hosting, it's great to have a selection of waterproof pads available, but it's it's just nice. I mean, I bring them when I go to hotels, too. Bring yourself it's thoughtful. Up. It's just thoughtful, mm-hmm. right? Um, and what about disclosing STIs? I think that... Um, Can't have this conversation without talking it, about no, absolutely. sexually transmitted and, infections. And and you just, you just do. So we That's just do, just... but... From both sides of the equation, from the hosting and from the attending, mm-hmm. from both sides of that, we can practice destigmatizing. Oh, yeah. STIs. Yep. Most people will have an STI over the course of their life at some point. Um, and, and I mean, most of us will have the flu at some point too. Yeah. Most of us will have we're, other medical experiences. We're physical bodies in the world. Yep. Um, and I mean, that's part of the fun of the sex is being physical bodies. So, but destigmatizing isn't the same as saying it doesn't matter. No. And so, creating when we're setting up a situation like this, when we're setting up a party like this, it's great to just say, hey, so let's all exchange. Let's exchange. And this day and age, getting tested regularly and then having the access to, to your tests on your phone. Yep is pretty straightforward. So let's exchange. Let's talk about this and let's problem solve. If people have, um, STIs that, that mean that it wouldn't be a good idea to swap bodily fluids or to have particular types of contact, there's a lot of other engagement that can happen Mm -hmm. that can be really juicy and fun. I've had some of the, the best impact play of my life from somebody who currently had, um, I think chlamydia, and so they were fully clothed the whole time. They were wearing gloves and they were, they, it, and they were using an instrument on me. It was completely reasonable. Um, and it was awesome. And it had nothing to do with yep. like, so the, it, and the... but, but he disclosed what was going on and said, but I'm here. We could just hang out and talk. And then we, we brainstormed some other ways that play could happen. And it was awesome. And it reminded me that, there are always there are always multiple options yeah. for joy and pleasure, um, and a little creative thinking got us past the um, well the the buzzkill the like oh dang wish this hadn't happened right um, flexibility again flexibility resiliency and creativity and before we close out let's talk about aftercare oh yes okay planning for aftercare is is an everybody all hands yep. on deck for planning for aftercare as host of course 
bring up the topic of aftercare. Is there anything people know that they're going to need or want? Um, is this a is this a play party where kink is like heavier kink is going to happen where people may need like more aftercare even because they may have physical impacts and and you know physical stuff happening to their bodies that's pretty intense. Providing access to aftercare though is an everybody deal, including for ourselves. Right. Knowing what we need after we are playing is that is a learned skill like mm -hmm. that that takes some some practice getting to know and then name and claim your aftercare desires that creates deep connection yes, some of the things yes, that work for aftercare are you know cuddling being wrapped in a blanket having a comfort object being brought water having some food um, being able to de-roll from a scene um being thanked being allowed to show gratitude um, having an opportunity to to share how that how awesome that experience was or to talk about it if it didn't yeah. go really well just to be able to talk about it knowing what you like though you still might need something else so figuring out how to how to communicate your aftercare needs is super, super important. And so as you're communicating your aftercare needs to each other, um, it remember that you get to, you know, add to that list. Right. And adding to that list could just be as simple as, I would love to just have a blanket wrapped around me and have somebody, um, you know, stay here with me while I just come back to myself. The and, things that you need in that moment, you don't have to have necessarily prepared a list. Right. Uh, that, and it might change. And it might change. So being able to ask for what you want. And then one of the more tender things that I have experienced is being able to receive aftercare from people who are newer to you. So you're at a party, you may not yeah. know everybody to the same degree. And there can be this really... Um, yeah, really beautiful and, and intimate moment of receiving receiving care or giving care to someone who he, is new to you. Yeah. Um, it can yeah, be a really delicious experience. And really that's can. one of, like, that lights up my compersion buttons, like, yeah. big time. And, you know, we didn't talk about safe words uh, much here, but obviously that's part of setting up a safe container, mm. a bounded container, is deciding what words will get used communally. And frequently in group settings, um, there's a there's a real need to, for everybody to be tuned into the fact that, that stop means stop. And there are times in play where we may negotiate to have stop not mean stop. And that's that a very complex... Super clear. That is a complicated thing. And in group settings, generally speaking, we we rely on, yep, no, we're going to use the English language or the language that's being spoken as it is. And mm -hmm. we may add some safe words on top of that. But stop and read and no are commonly understood hard stops. Everybody stops and we get a sense of what's going on. And then on top of that, I like to have our personal safe word yeah. that just lets me check in with you and as as sort of a yellow light for the two of us like hey i i need the two of us to check in yeah um and establishing those things up front so that everybody knows what to expect is really helpful this is a fun conversation but i'm guessing that some listeners are like huh how do i even begin and i huh. i think that we shouldn't leave this conversation without saying this is a weird time oh, and I wasn't well, even sure we should record this episode. We've had it on the, on the list for a while and people have asked about it. And I think we were all hoping that at this late date in 2021, we wouldn't be still dealing with intense pandemic stuff, but here we are. And so I'll just say that, you know, vaccinations and, and, um, Rapid testing results are part of the game now. They just are. Yeah. Um, we need to keep from creating spreader events. And so being very honest and frank about what your experience 
is currently of COVID symptoms and dealing with the very real ramifications of being in a time when, remember, even if you feel safe, we all are taking care of each other yes. and all the people that, that we're all going to then disperse from a party, mm -hmm. all the people we come in contact with afterwards. So yeah, we got to take this seriously and show deep care for each other by taking it seriously and by being willing to, to make clear what our boundaries are and what we're doing. And if that means that now isn't the time for mm. you to be participating, that's fine. There's a million other ways to have great sexy time. So let that just, that could be fine. That could be exactly where you need to be for right now. I know I'm taking it day by day these days because things change and getting hung up on the idea that we have to have, we have to have a particular set of experiences is it, it closes down the fun of it anyways. That it, it definitely does. I mean, the, we talked about STIs and that's key. That's important. Well, we're in a pandemic, so there's something else we need to think about just as much. Yeah, absolutely. What is, what's your, what's your COVID status? What's going on? What's up? And, and that, so that needs to be talked about when, during the earlier planning, yep. but then again, as it, the date the arrives, yep. right? Now we're here. And then of course, getting started is also kind of awkward at the, the beginning. Like the first between time, everybody being there and yeah, everybody and shows up and now how do starts. we start? Yeah. Like literally, how do we start? I'm widely known to be um, Tinder, basically. Yeah. And what is it you do? <laughs> oh, I just kiss somebody. You start having you start. <laughs> yeah. sex. Yeah. I, I just... And that, that does it. So th that works for me. I, I'm mm -hmm. fine with just jumping in the deep end. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. In fact, I really like it. But it can be, there can be this moment where you're like, I don't really know. And the thing I love to see happen is a consent discussion and then some some actual like connection mm -hmm. time yeah so that it's not um so there's no expectation of everybody getting on the same page all at the same second right um i usually find another fire starter and that works out it's all fine but when we're when we're not sure what to do check in with yourself check in with your body it's it's all going to be okay if you stay in integrity with yourself and you allow yourself to stay at choice. Mm -hmm. There's no better or worse way to show up at these things as long as we're, we're self-aware and we're practicing consent and moving toward pleasure. And as far as actually like figuring out how to host one of these events or how to go to one, yeah, it is about connections. It's about about becoming part of a community of people who you trust enough to play yeah. in this way. And that usually starts off with just one or two other people. So I for I think that that's that's an overlooked facet. Um we didn't jump into like 50 people in a room, but just like a couple of other people. Yeah. And so yeah, let that let this be part of your experiment as you figure out what works for you. Um, we can do some follow-up on this yep. and dive into the topic yep. further if people would like. So feel free to email either of us. You can reach me at Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. Ken at Ken, uh, Ken at JolieHamilton.com. And, you know, if, if you have questions, go ahead and pose them. But if you have scenarios where like, what if this happened? Yeah. That's fine too. And we can always um, answer those anonymously in a future episode. Yes, we can. Okay. Well, till next time, everybody. Keep talking to each other. Hey, everybody. So we've talked quite a bit about how to do relationships, but I know a lot of you would really like to get my eyes on your relationships specifically. It's so worth it. And yeah, that's a bit of a hard thing for me to do for everyone individually, unless you're actually working in my coaching program. But good news, I'm doing some free live trainings. Yay! Yay. Live trainings. That's, that's awesome. I mean, I get it all the time. I'm with you all the time. It's true. I get true. lots of training and and You were just in one so... big free live training. And oh, wait, I'm... you pay for it. Okay, maybe I pay for it a little, but you don't have to. Okay, so I would love to to have y'all click on over to my website, joliehamilton.com. 
And if you click on the tab that says work with Jolie, you're going to see my latest offering for live training. These are 60 minute masterclasses in how we can relate better. I'm going to be covering topics like creative monogamy, like how to transition into consensual non-monogamy, if that's your thing. And I'm also going to be talking about something that is really in my wheelhouse and something that we don't talk about on this show as often as we might, which is how to have a completely kick-ass relationship that really empowers you to be your full CEO mm -hmm. power player self. Right. So in my other world, I do a lot of business coaching. So bring it on. Bring it on. And you've all here heard us talking about our relationship and you have heard how she has addressed all of our issues in our relationship and how we talk about it. And she will turn that attention on you. And it is amazing what you can learn. Well, thanks. And yeah, just jump on over. Love to see you in there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to jolie at joliehamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news.